I said, no, if you touch your tongue in that pal teeth, then that uh, pronunciation, that and sa. Asakti. So asakti is attachment, inclination, clingingness, holding on, this type of. And this is a problem for us because we are asakta to so many things. We are attached to so many things. We cling on to so many things. Therefore, our mind does not go to God. Now, you turn your Ramakrishna's formula. We have that asakti. We are all human beings. We are born with that. I'll, childhood days, we love my mom, my, my, my auntie, my dad, my grandma, grandmother. And we grow, then love our boyfriend, girlfriend, this, that. And then we grow, then we love our son, grandson, uh, granddaughter, grandson. That it, it goes on, loving from one to the other. It is like, uh, where is the ashakti goes? And it does not go to God. That is the major point. But it can go. You can turn that. You can turn the direction. As we do unconsciously. So here is said, some devotees may be ashakta, hmm, attached to what? Guna mahatma asakti. Guna means quality. And guna means glory. Ah. And Mahatma means also glory. Eh? Guna and Mahatma, Mahima. Love of the glorification of the Lord's blessed qualities. You love to hear about the glory. Oh, God is such. When you read the Bhagavad, when you read the life of Ramakrishna, when you read the life of Sri Chaitanya, you see they are very Jesus Christ. You see their life and their glory, how they live the life, how in the adverse situation they were totally uh, concentrated in the thought of God. So this is one way one can follow. Guna and Mahima. Guna means quality, glories. Mahima is the charm, greatness, greatness of that. What is the greatness of Lord? Most of the prayers when we chant, Oh Lord, you are like that, you are the creator, you are the sustainer, you are the this, you are compassionate, you are this, no? you are glorifying that. Uh, oh Lord, you have created this whole universe, no? What a glory, uh, what, a, what a great power you have. So, so we feel awe and attracted to the awe, uh, awe something which God's, as a God's glory. Not, some people say, oh, it is nature, why do you bother about that? And you see the beauty of the nature, it is nature has created. But devotees say, no, God has created. So if one's mind gradually turns towards God and his glories, that's one way. Love, it is shifting its direction from the things we love to some other thing. So, Guna Mahatma Shakti, Rupa Shakti. Rupa rup means beauty. Hey, we, we, we see the baby Krishna. Hey, you see, everything is beauty. Beautiful. Krishna's smile is beautiful smile. Oh, Krishna walking and dancing the, with an anklet. What a beautiful dance, no? So, that it is everything beautiful. The eyes are beautiful. Uh, Nayanang madhuram, Sopanang madhuram, Chalanang madhuram, Bachanang madhuram, Madhuradipate, Madhuram madhuram, Madhuram madhuram, Madhuram. Krishna, everything is madhur. Uh, so, that charm of the beauty of that, Rupa. We are all naturally attracted to any, anything what is beautiful. Sunrise is beautiful, so who is not attracted to the just sun, to see the sunrise? Who does not like that sun is rising in the background of the, what you call the ocean, no? Just think of that. It's charming. So our mind gets attracted. So when the mind gets attracted to such rupa, huh, beauty of God, so rupa shakti. So though rupa shakti, love for his enchanting beauty, 
in this country when Swami Vivekananda came, most of the newspaper, when they describe, they describe, my God, oh, his eyes are this, his face is this, and this. When I half page goes the <coughs> description of how beautiful he was. Even his turban. Uh-huh. Whatever attracts the roof, eh? attracts our eyes, no? So instead of thinking of something, we are thinking of God and God's beauty. But that is turning our attention, that's the bhakti. Bhakti is turning our, our attachment is there. I am not to kill that attachment, but I am only give a direction to that attachment. Uh, you love, uh, as I say, you, you go to the garden and you see, wow, what a beautiful flower. You, you think that it is beautiful flower, bhakta will say, see the glory, how God's beauty is manifesting to the be- this beautiful flower, no? It's everywhere where any, any charming thing you see, it is all God's glory. So you, it reminds you of God, God, God. So then you are a bhakta. Otherwise you are an ordinary person who, who appreciates everything which looks today good and tomorrow goes away. So they feel disinterested in it. So that is not devotion. So here it says, Rupa Shakti. Thar is Puja Shakti. Love of worship. There are certain people who love to do the worship as we do in a temple. Eh? So some people worship him and ah ha ha, you are so good being a garland. Eh? Normally that's why when someone brings a flower, eh? We say, okay, let it go to the Lord first. Huh? Someone say, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> So you feel the um, fragrance of it and you say, wow, wow. Huh? But if this is for love, love for God. So it should go to the Lord first. Love of worship. So whatever they get, they put it as worship for the Lord, not for... Um, human being, not for any brain, not for anything. It should go to God first. So, so they are also ritualistic worship. They may like ritualistic worship. That is the way. Eh? Like Sushi Maharaj, you look at that Swami Ramakrishna Nanda in our order. He used to engage himself in service to Sri Ramakrishna, worship. Eh? Very meticulously, very ritualistically. And that may turn into love for God and he feel his presence. Then puja shakti, smarana shakti. Day and night remember him. As a friend remembers a friend, eh? so a devotee will remember God, always remembering the mantra, or remembering his name, chanting his name, or whatever happens. As a child, remember some mother, everything. Anything happens, child runs, away. ma, 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 ma. Ah. So that is a spontaneous. A child knows there is nothing but mother. So a bhakta knows there is nothing but God. So everything will be uh, turning his attention to remember God. Dasya shakti, like serving, serving the Lord, eh? like Hanuman, Sarva Rama, Swami Vivekananda, Sarva Rama Krishna. Eh? This, this is this example of dasya bhakti. The servant attitude with the Lord. Lord is my master, and my whole life is to serve Him. We serve whole day. We are serving. Everyone is serving. Uh, we say yeah, we we serve. We don't serve God, and that's why we, at the end of the day we get frustrated. If we have served God, then every bit of service will give me joy and joy because I have done for God, done for God, done for God. But I think that, oh, I had to do this in the morning for this person, that person, in the office, this boss, this um, co-worker didn't cooperate with me. You are not doing work for co-worker. You are not doing for your boss. You are not doing for your any friend. or You are doing for God. God, 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 God. So that should be the attitude. That dasya shakti, shakya shakti. So make God is your friend. Making God as our friend. So like Arjuna in the Gita, Bhagavad Gita, he is 
when before uh, this Bhagavad Gita, he has the attitude of a friend with a friend. He used to walk with him, talk to him, like a friend talking to a friend, no? That is the dasyo in uh, sakya. Sakya means friendship. Sakya asakti. Batsala asakti. God can be loved as by child, as like the mother-child attitude. Uh, here, the examples are there, like the Jasoda, uh, the mother, like um, loved whom? Krishna. Uh, Chandra Devi, the mother of Ramakrishna, loved Krishna, uh, Sri Ramakrishna. Uh, so like that, God is my child. So the same affinity, affinity for the child is there, but not that is not binding them, that type of attachment is releasing them from bondage, thinking of the child there, God, 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 no? So this is the Batsal of love for him as son. Kanta Shakti, thinking God, love for God as a wife loves her husband. So this is a human relationship attitude. But when it goes to God, Krishna, Mirabai. Mirabai was married and this and that, but he didn't like that. He was a prince and she loved Krishna, Krishna, Krishna is my husband. And she lived in that consciousness and were totally absorbed in that consciousness and she became such a great saint. Bridal mysticism. In the Christian world, there is a bridal mysticism. Thinking. God is the only beloved Lord of me. So thinking that, the asakti which ordinary people, the attachment which the ordinary people will have for their human flesh and blood, it will be deified into divine love. So that is the way. And then atma nivedana asakti, love of self-surrender. I cannot do anything. I take refuge in you. Uh, you do whatever you can do. That surrender, surrender. Atma nivedan. Nivedan means offering. Offering oneself at the altar of the Lord. It is nothing I can do. It is you. Are, you can only help me, and I am. I am helpless child. Uh, I surrender myself. Self surrender. Tanmaya shakti. Tanmaya means absorbed. We, we feel absorbed when a beautiful music, music, me, those people who love music, are listening to good music, they get absorbed and absorbed, and time goes away. Those who uh, play some instrument also, if they love that play and they get absorbed and absorbed, the time forget that their one hour is gone. So similarly, in God, they will be absorbed in God, thinking of God, and absorption will come. And as a lover loves, so finds joy, so he will also, or she will also find tanmaya sakti, love for being absorbed in him, the Lord. Paramo biraha sakti, this is another, another type of love is there, which is called the love for the pain of separation from him. Uh, it's a uh, separation anxiety, no? Yeah, that is the point. So I'm not seeing God anymore. Huh? Uh, every day we pray in the morning, the moment separation uh, from the will be like a thousand years. Every morning we pray. That is Sri Chaitanya's prayer. Sri Chaitanya used to pray, Oh Lord, let me have that type of feeling that I have not if in a blinking of my eyes, that much time I don't see you, uh, let me feel that, that pain of as if I have not seen you for such a long time. So that is a, also a expression of love. And that also is not ordinary person can have that. But though externally that is a, there is a pain in it, this separation pain, but internally they feel the touch of God. Mm. Because their mind is totally saturated in the beloved. That's why the physical appearance is not there. So they are very unhappy with that and they feel the uh, difference there. 
सो परम विरह आसक्ति रूपा एको धा उपी दो ऑल भक्ति इज वन लाव भक्ति मीन्स लाव बट एको धा उपी दो इट इज वन लाव इज ओनली वन एकादश धा भवती इट टेक्स इलेवेन डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स एको दश टाइप इलेवेन टाइप्स ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन मीन्स you can follow any of the means and you can have love for god develop in you <coughs> so here it said the do <coughs> itself only one so i am on verse number 82 we are all, all discuss the 11th names eleven types of bhakti as the sage narada have designed he said it is the running meaning will be like this i have forgotten to bring the book uh, this book in my room i don't need you can give that bring that book i can manage it <coughs> eighty two bars on page 162 it says this divine love manifests itself in 11 different forms one a devotee loves to chant the praises and glories of the blessed lord this is one two he loves his enchanting beauty so he is totally absorbed in his beauty lord's beauty three he loves to offer him the worship of his heart four he loves to meditate on his presence constantly five he loves to think of himself as his servant he loves him as his friend loves him as his child loves him as his beloved loves to surrender himself to him complete completely he loves to be completely absorbed in him the lord he loves to feel the pangs of separation from him so these are the eleven expressions this last expression of love that is to feel the pangs of separation from him is typified in the lives of those who love god as their beloved husband when these pangs of separation are felt there is always a greater bliss in the union with the beloved so this is the entire 11 ways not much explanation is here but we find a deeper explanation in the book of sami भूतेशानंद लेट मी गो थ्री देन आई कम टू दैट नाइन टाइप्स बात कर दो नाइन टाइप्स all the types give me so the running man translation goes though itself only one bhakti manifests itself in 11 forms and just to have seen love the glorification of the lord's blessed quality and just yes it enchanting love etc worship love of constant remembrance love of service love of god as a friend love of god as a son or daughter love of god as a husband love of surrender to himself love of complete absorption in him and love of pain of separation now we have read the sutras that paravakti the supreme love do one manifest itself in this form so love of the glorification of the lord's blessed qualities this is one the glory of the different qualities of god the idea being to meditate on god's qualities or to desire to remember god god's qualities constantly so these forms of of which bhakti may take 
walk to me take or one take or any one of these may be cultivated by the devotee these forms are supposed to be interrelated so swami ji says here that it is not that you have to practice every one but you can take any any of this 11 as we are coming to the nine types of navodha bhakti navodha bhakti is mentioned in by ramachandra also by to the say sabari sabari was a um, uh, tribal lady he, he she was raised in the matanga sage they are home, they are in the ashram of matanga rishi and he, he matanga guru taught sabari nine types of devotion navodha bhakti no it is rama ultimately taught nine types so these are different nine types are here shravanam hearing the names and glories of the lord kirtanam you chant jointly we we chanting oh we say hari krishna hari krishna like that you can say rama krishna sharanam rama krishna sharanam like that this is the chanting of the glory and chanting of the glories what greatness of his compassion his love smaranam remembering the lord pad sevanam serving almost they are close to the 11 but names are different and approaches are different pad sevanam that's why in in hari krishna temple or in yoga we also give it here after they worship the drinking water right? that's called charanamrita the nectar of washing the feet of the lord no so as if we are offered and uh, that that um, when we offer it this become pure that water we drink to have devotion in us so pad bandanam when you go to our uh, temple that's why we bring flower offer flower at the feet Uh, so this is one archanam worshiping the lord as we do with sandal paste incense flowers fruits candies and so many big puja we do so many paraphernalia of worshiping god bandanam offering obeisance into lord bandanam that always praise uh, prayers and praises dasyam serving the lord in his servant sakyam these are common Uh, the servant attitude or the friendship attitude atma nivedanam total surrender that is also common so uh, these are the different ways of expressing the devotion into god so, so they are not different but language it is more elaborate here 11 type is more elaborate here so the atma the last one you said that would be like just total like oneness uh, with god just total feeling one na atma nivedan means atman means the lower self the small self nivedan means you offer it as if your small i is offered to the big i so you lower i gets dissolved so god sai remain that is the atma nivedan anything you do that 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 you have no freedom to do anything like the Giris Ghosh did that. Offered it to Ramakrishna. Ramakrishna said, "You do remember God in the morning and the evening every day." He said, "I cannot do. I, I do not know when that morning, my morning comes. When my evening will happen, I have no. I don't know anything because I mean, I live in drinking. Uh, more my night, my morning is. I have no control over it." okay then then do at least one time but that also i cannot give you any word i can do one time okay then when you go to bed well when i shall go to bed i have no idea and in what condition i will go i do not know <laughs> so he refused everything then ramakrishna was kind and he said okay so you then give me your power of attorney you give the power of attorney no so power of attorney means you give your everything so you need not have to do anything we give power of attorney to the lawyers you don't do anything the lawyer will say whatever yeah is good for you he thinks but then you cannot say hey, lawyer why are you saying tell what i am wanting no he is he is giving in a court 
his presentation. So what he will think, he will do. So to when we surrender to God, then God takes the total responsibility. And he thought, bah, very good. Then I need not have to call upon God. I will, well, then Ramakrishna says, you do whatever you like. That means I will drink, I will dance, I will write my, um, um, what do you call the, uh, all the uh, writings of the acting and producing. I will do all this work as I am doing. Nothing to do, no change. And he will do everything for me. So we all want that type of license, no? But now he was a sincere person. He thought that I have given it to God. And now his son died. And he was thinking, uh, he, his heart is breaking. He used to cry. But say, then he stopped. Can I cry? I have given author all my power of attorney to Ramakrishna. So is it his will that shall I cry? I have no power at all to cry even at the death of my son. So it is too very difficult thing to give power of attorney. So that is... Uh, that, that is saranagati, atma nibedan. Right? When we offer ourselves at the feet of the Lord, then we have no, no uh, special uh, action to do, neither you have any authority to do. Every moment you will have to talk to him. Oh Lord, guide me. Shall I do this? Shall I put my step right side or left side? Mm-hmm. You have to contact and get his permission. So this is much more remembering God every second. Yeah. I'll say this. Can I say this? Oh, Lord. No, no, no. Uh, can I say this? Make me an instrument. Tell. What shall I say? No? It is a much difficult task. Every second you're going to breathe. Shall I breathe? What is your will or my will? So this is Atma Nivedanam. That's the highest state. But practice. We can do practice. This is one way of connecting with God. Uh, one type of devotional practice. So I'm reading this from Swami Bhuteshananda Maharaj. So he says that love of the glorification with Lord's blessed qualities, glory of the different qualities of God, the glory of the d- different qualities of God, the idea being to meditate on God's qualities or to desire to remember God's qualities constantly. So God's qualities, what is infinite love? You think of Christ, his infinite dedication, his infinite purity, uh, his uh, unbounded uh, devotion to the uh, self, to the truth. So think of them. As you think, your heart becomes purified. And then that will draw the lower self towards the big self, towards God. Attachment to the Lord's beauty, as I have said. Lord's beauty, uh, every scripture talks about baby Krishna. Beauty and his, the, the uh, Lord's beauty was attracted. Everyone, it attracts everyone. The, when Krishna was born, Krishna's beauty was such so much that the entire community, they used to come to see once, Every day, a routine. They cannot stay away from without seeing his beautiful smiling face, his uh, prattle, his uh, just walking, talking, or even his, his prattling. So it is getting attracted to the beauty of uh, Ramakrishna. Given a present day example, Sri Ramakrishna was a child. He has such an he has a attraction. So whole village will have to come to Sri Ramakrishna every day. The village girls, maybe housewives, they, when they go, they will have to come to Ramakrishna's house. And they sit their home and see where is Gadai, that boy Gadai, and look at him and talk to him and see him. Without, they cannot miss seeing him for even a day. And even they don't see him in a, even one day, they will make an excuse, make an excuse to come to their home and see. The old, young, all alike, uh, 
this be so much is the attraction when god comes purity has an attraction no purity total love where there is no taint of any worldliness when that manifests that creates a tremendous attraction and when god comes it is unbounded it's a love and attraction that's a krishna is called karshati iti krishna that krishna means who attracts who pulls the mind of everyone and that is ramakrishna he means the ram krishna ram badmais as they say in bengali there is a word ram means extreme and krishna means attraction ram ramakrishna is such a extreme attraction for everyone so village old ladies young ladies passers by men women and everyone they his playmates they could not stay for a moment without uh, ram krishna godai no so even krishna when he was in a he was a young boy he used to go with the cows to graze no all the cowherd boys uh, sri krishna was the center of attraction for them when swami vivekananda when his childhood he was the leader but he was the attraction his beauty his beauty was such that's why uh, sri ramakrishna uh, sometimes used to say i love you not that you look good not for your external beauty but i see narayana lord in you that's why i love you so that's the divine love but attraction is the question so this attraction beauty attachment to his worship as i said uh, flower plucking flowers making sandal paste making a garland then offering mantra offering food and candies you go to the really uh, hari krishna temple you see the pujari is engaged from morning till night you go to our belur mot the who is worshiping the shri ramakrishna morning early morning 3:30 onward his day starts uh, to serve the lord to wake up the lord as if he is sleeping you go and wake up uh, help him and then take care of his needs and everything whole day feed this this time feeding this time making bed this time giving the new cloth to wear so everything connected with his necessity sira my gods to serve and worship him attachment to remembering that just make a plan i will remember him all the time eh? that should be our sadhana but a real devotee cannot spend a moment eh, without remembering god ramakrishna gave the example if someone has a toothache eh, he does not need to be reminded hey have you toothache toothache will remind you so devotee will be such he will be reminding remembering god all that moment it does not depend on somebody to tell him oh th- are you thinking are you thinking are you thinking so this is really the attitude if they cannot stop thinking uh, so this is a process if you take this path uh, i will remember god all the time make a resolution bhakti so what forget other other sadhana i will remember god every time that's why you call japa you repeat the mantra huh all the time i'll do i forget okay let me do now let me do now continuous 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 then it will be spontaneous identification with the mantra and mantra and mantra's name and form two things come together when you utter a word word has an object we say book book is a word word has a subject what is the subject they this size printed something and with some material in it that is called book if i say it is a tree immediately tree word has a connection with something or some object so it is not here but if i tell you a big banyan tree in your mind there will be an image of the big banyan tree 
So similarly, when you take a Ramakrishna, you take a Krishna, or you say Christ, this, that form will be remembered in your heart. So that is a practice. One can do that. Then attachment to him as that of a servant to the master. So if it is one is thinking that I am the servant of the Lord, so whatever you are doing, you are thinking that I am not serving anyone. I am not a servant of anyone. I am not attached to my doing any duty to anybody, but I am serving God, God. Take that attitude, only one attitude. See what happens, a total transformation will come. From morning till night, whatever I do, I am doing for God, doing for God. I am his servant, I am his servant. I am to serve, I am not to question. Huh? We call born slave, no? The slavery is gone, but you remember the slavery, you have no idea. So they will purchase a man, eh, say, with some money, and, born and bring a slave in their home. Okay? So when they bring the slave in their home, what they do? Slave has no personality. Day and night, they will have to be doing the work for the master, otherwise they will get a whip and this. But we are not to be whipped by anyone. We are serving God, serving God, whatever you are doing. You are cleaning, cooking, you are washing, you are making a garland, you are doing in the garden, or you are doing your um, driving, you are doing office. Everything is serving. I am serving my master, Sri Ramakrishna. God, 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 God. Just one idea. Take this. This is the, the attachment that it is servant to his master. I am his servant. It is not anyone is forcing me to be the servant, but I willfully accept, take this attitude that I am the servant. Rasami Vivekananda said, I am your servant for life and life onward. Das tabu janame janame dayanidhi. You are ocean of compassion, dayanidhi. I am your servant of this life and lives and lives together. So in every life, uh, I am your servant. That means whatever I do, it is for God I am doing, God I am doing. So one attitude, that is the servant attitude. Attachment to him as a friend. Uh, some people may have some personal relationship, like he is my friend. So if you think that he is my friend, then you are very free. You don't fear your friend, then he is not your friend. So someone think God is my friend. So it's ex exceptional relationship, not that all can have that type of relationship. Uh, very rarely we find like Arjuna people uh, making friendship with Krishna. But again, that attitude may change. If, if to a friend you don't hide anything, you need not have to show special honor and respect. Friend is friend, yeah. You sit, I sit, you bring a cup of water, I can, hey, why are you standing? The friend talks like that, no? But when you, so you can think of God in your know, personal relationship. Wherever is any, it is, I am a friend of the Lord, Lord is my friend. So that attitude. At, an attachment to him as a child, it is a good idea. Huh? As a child, that means the devotees, cherishes the feeling or attitude towards God as his son. God is my son. So that's why everyone does that in household, Indian household families and devotees family will see that they can, some people could not go for a vacation unless they arrange for their puja, worship in the temple. They have their own shrine room, but they, oh, if you go, who will serve tomorrow morning? Uh, they are doing Mahakali's puja. And their Mahakali is there every day to be worshipped and paid. So they cannot go anywhere. You will have to get up and first put the Lord to come out of the bed. You have to give some fruits and candies to eat. Huh? Then you have to do certain time, little worship. No? Here. Since the beginning till today, not a single day the puja is stopped. Not a single day, morning, Lord is wake up from the bed. Huh? Night time we put him as if he's sleeping. We do with a, with a uh, what you call blanket, 
in the, when it is too cold, we put blanket. When it is light in the weather, eh, we put a cotton, some light blanket. Light blanket, light chadar, eh, or heavy, heavy chadar. So, hey, and who will put? It happens sometimes, and I, sometimes whose duty is there, he has forgotten, or that's a big thing. <laughs> so you cannot keep that, the, because it is called seba aparad. It will be your uh, a failure in performing your responsibility towards Lord. So you think that is the service attitude. He's a baby, as if he depends on you. If you don't feed, he will not eat. Eh? How can you keep God fasting like that? He is dependent. You cook. When you are cooking, I have seen one gentleman, he loves Krishna. But when he moves, he carries Krishna, the image of Krishna in his hand. He is going with, uh, in the plane he goes, he holds in his hand. <laughs> and when he goes to room, he puts it in one place. And I, I was one uh, in Canada. And I came back, we are nine thirty or 10. He gave up all the work and put, put the baby Krishna there. He brought from the refrigerator milk and little boiled it and then little not too hot, not too cold and then started bathing him that time because he was not bathed in the noon time <laughs> because he was busy in this whole day. So he put him and he's bathing the baby Krishna with the milk and then feeding little milk in the mouth and then this and that as if the baby is waiting all day. Yeah. And he, then he puts him, and then he thinks of his own. So thinking of God as my child or as dependent on me, I am to serve him, I am to worship him. So that is an attitude. Uh, so, but we have extended. In Vedanta, you extend whatever you do, you think that you are serving Krishna. You are serving Ramakrishna. You give a glass of water, you are giving to this whom? To... Your friend? No. Think it is Ramakrishna through the friend. Through the friend, but Ramakrishna is the person taking your offer. So this attitude, this is a bhakti practice. Attachment to the Lord as husband, as a wife's relationship to her husband. So that is uh, love for self-surrender we have discussed. Attachment to him in the form of complete absorption. Uh, some people, maybe many people are there, they chant the mantra, or chant the name with a with symbol, uh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, and they go absorb, 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 then it stops and they get absorption. So that may be one way if your nature suits that. Attachment to the supreme anguish as a result of separation. So these are the 11. So now I go. Uh, through this a little explanation. These are the forms which bhakti may take. Or any one of these, any one of these may be cultivated by the devotee. You can, you need not have to take all these different ways of loving God, but you can take any of the path, these are all bhakti path, you can practice. These forms are supposed to be interrelated. If you take one, the other will come automatically. Whenever a person develops this extreme love, a form of love for God, he develops these ideas or attitudes towards God. The first form mentioned in the glorification of the attributes of the Lord. A devotee actually starts his devotion with this. God's glory has to be meditated upon so that gradually we become more and more attached to him. People, uh, Ramakrishna said, that a group of devotees used to come, Sikh people, the Sikh, the Sikhism, these people used to come and Ramakrishna used to say, why do you glorify God so much? Oh Lord, you are so glorious. Oh Lord, you have created this world. Uh, and then they said, is it, shall we not say that God has created us, God is giving us food, God is giving us breath, breathing, that's why we are alive, so we should be grateful. That's why his glory is. Well, he is your mom, he is your dad, no? It is his responsibility. Why do we glorify that? That's the advanced state. But the point is that we really get attracted to God. How? Oh, look at the sky. Oh, my God, who has created glory of God? 
who has created the moon, moonlight, who has created the beautiful flowers, who has created these stars and galaxies, and all the types of creatures, all the plants and things, miracles of the nature, wonders of the nature. Wow, what? God is so great. So you feel charmed, attracted towards God. This is one way of loving God. Then comes his beauty. To think of the beauty of the Lord is, a, is moving a little bit closer. First is the greatness, grandeur of God. Seeing the vastness in the nature, beauty of the nature, huh? the, all the attractive things in the world, it is who created? Who created? The devotee will say, God has created. So it reflects God's presence and God's glory. So that to think of the beauty of the Lord is moving a little bit closer or making a closer relationship with divine. So that is, that means you are beauty, as I said, uh, Swamiji's beauty was really uh, very attractive, no? Uh, people used to really marvel at his wonderful face, eyes, yeah, looking with that eyes, eh? how much beautiful descriptions in all the Western news media was there during those. That was a style, of course. Uh, they used to describe the orator, uh, how tall he looks, how grandeur he moves, what is in their sash, what is the uh, covering the body, uh, clothing he is wearing, and all these descriptions. So one can utilize that thing as God. So third one. Next, it means offering of worship of him. Eh? Then comes worship. When, which means offering worship to him or even attachment to his worship. You may not be worship, but you like to do a worship. There are some people by temperament. Given the chance, they will be uh, liking to do the ritualistic worship and thinking that I am serving God only. As I said in Hare Krishna temple, pujaris get 24 hours engaged into uh, the worship part only. And they think they call the Devo Seva, service to God. That, that is their sadhana, day and night. Next is attachment to his remembrance. Then various other attitudes are mentioned. Attachment to God as his servant. This is the beginning of a co close personal relationship. When you see the relationship point, then you think that friendship is the first one. Then attitude of servant towards his master. The devotee considers himself as a servant and God is his master. Next, in order of nearness, is considering him as a friend of the devotee. Now, this relationship means being almost as the level, as it were, same level. A servant keeps himself at a distance from the master, but a friend need not keep any kind of distance. He is so intimate that he considers God as equal. This is the beauty of the relationship of friendship. Even more intense is the relationship between father or mother and the child. God may be treated here as the child, and the devotee may consider himself or herself as the father or mother. This is very sweet relationship where there cannot be any question, give and take. Okay, so I'll read the last few descriptions, but we have discussed overall, but the Swami has given a good note, quite few pages, we'll read for the next class. So we end here. Om Shanti, 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 Harihi, Om Tatsat, Sri Ram Krishna Panamastu. So, probably there is no question, no? That's good. So today, we have a special 7.30 class. Uh, that class will be given by, uh, lect this is a lecture, you can say, Professor Arindam Chakravarti, who is a uh, professor of philosophy in Stony Brook University. And he is teaching in Hawaii, University of Hawaii, for last 22 years. 
and also he teaches in the Asoka University. He is in the Department of Philosophy. So he is here. So we will be use, uh, hearing from him about the topic, what he has given. Uh, I forgot the topic. To a friend. To a, to a friend. By Swami Vivekananda's poem is there, to a friend. And he will try uh, the other disciples, the love between Swami Vivekananda and others or the Guru Bhais. I like that from that angle he will discuss. It will be a very interesting thing. It was my class, uh, so I thought that let me take advantage of his presence here. Uh, he is a very well-renowned professor of uh, philosophy uh, in the modern time, I hear from Sarvapriyananda Swami. So anyhow, he will be speaking at 7.30 from this platform. And Shanti Gita, today's Shanti Gita, what I was to do, I will do it tomorrow. Uh, and Shanti Gita, they are really also we are doing the Tattamasi, thou art that, we are reading that area. So we will blend that idea how Sri Ramakrishna once said, uh, you have to know who am I, what are you, and what is the relationship between you and me. So that is the, so we will read tomorrow. Uh, and tonight then 7.30, we will be listening to Professor Arindam Chakravarti. Thank you. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti.